Hello, and welcome to the next Kiwi Crash Course video. I'm still using the same program I've been building throughout the course, and as usual, I put a link to a downloadable version in the video description, so you can download and use it if you want to follow along. So our program's still fairly simple. The last time we translated the entire thing straight to this Kiwi language, a special domain-specific language for making rules that construct Kiwi widget trees. Rather than instantiating individual widgets, we write down these layers of nested widgets, with all the different properties we want, like in this case the font size, the size hint, and so on. Vitally, Kiwi language can also detect when we reference other properties, like here the labels text refers to the text input text, so that automatically makes a binding so that when we type in the text input and change its text, the label is immediately and automatically updated. I'm going to base this video on a simple question. How do I interweave Kiwi language back to Python? That is, clearly the Kiwi language way of doing things is neat and very flexible, but what happens as soon as we want to add something more complex that we can't write down in just one line of the Kiwi file? In pure Python, we might be used to moving all this kind of thing into class methods or whatever in order to compartmentalize it, and that's still a good idea, but how's it going to work with this Kiwi language? To answer the question, I use a very simple example. How can I change the color of the label text whenever I press a key? That's actually a pretty simple task that we could do entirely in Kiwi language, and I'll show you how by the end of the video. But I'll show you a way to call back to Python, which of course is very generally powerful, because once we're back in Python, we could do absolutely anything just as normal. So the label's color property, if the label has this color, and it's a list of RGBA values, so it could be 1, 0, 0, 1 for red with full opacity. But I want to set this to something random every time I press the key in the text input and change it to text. So step one, how do we call an arbitrary function when text input checks changes? It turns out here, Kiwi properties have our back, and there's this on text event that's automatically called when a text changes. This is totally general, so we could have had on font size, and that's going to be called whenever the font size changes if we did have some code that did that. And every Kiwi property will have this uh, event associated, including if we create our own. I'm not going to cover the details of that here, but probably I'll try and do that in the next video. For now, it's enough to know that we can call it, we can use this on text to call a function whenever the text changes. So okay, we can call a function. Now we need to go back to the Python side and actually make a function that creates a random color and sets the labels text appro uh, sets the labels color appropriately. So let's do that. It's a convenient here to use a method of the scatter text widget because that widget contains all the behavior of our program. We may as well associate the function here with that uh, class rather than putting it on its own. So let's create a change label color method. So now to make a random color, ooh, looks like I've already imported random. Import it again just to be safe. Uh, if you haven't used this before, random is just a Python module that lets us generate random numbers. And we're going to have a new color that's equal to random.random. .random. That gives us a random number between 0 and 1. Range three plus one. It's a slightly crude way of doing things, maybe, but it's going to give us three random numbers for the red, green, and blue components, and the one just for the opacity. Uh, you could change that as well if you wanted, and that would give you translucent or transparent text. So next thing we need to do is call back to the Kiwi language and actually change the label's color. The problem here is we never actually made a label. We didn't instantiate one. We only described how it should work in the Kiwi language. So how do we call to the Kiwi language label that it was created automatically when the scatter text widget was made? The answer here is again we can make use of these Kiwi language IDs. We use them in Kiwi language to refer to the text input from the label. But in Python, the scatter text widget actually retains a dictionary of all of them. So we can do label equals self.ids and we call it my label. So that's a completely general way of referring to any ID from the Python side. That would mean that if you wanted to do any other behavior, and changing label color is one thing, but if you wanted to change a text input property, its font size or whatever, you simply refer to my text input instead. Or if you've made your own widgets, you give them a different ID and refer to that. So now we have the label, we can simply set its color with label.color equals color. And that's going to give the label the random color that we just made. Now the final thing is going back to Kiwi language. We know we can get uh, we can call an arbitrary function with this on text event, and we have to know how do we actually call back to a method of the scatter text widget. The answer here is Kiwi language has this root keyword, 
we can do root dot change label color. Now root always refers to the top level uh, widget of a widget tree. In this case, the rule is for a scatter text widget. So root refers to that. And because scatter text widget has this change label color method, we can simply call it directly. Remembering again, that everything on the right hand side of this column is pure Python. So it's just a normal Python function call. And that seems to be it. So now we've written down what we want. Let's prove it works. Looks the same as normal for now. What happens if I start changing the text? Seems to work. As I start to change things, every time I do, uh, the label changes color. Every time the text input text changes at all. So we've got exactly what we wanted. That's it for the basic idea here. Now we know that whenever we want to do anything more complex, we can use these on property events to call right back to Python, write down any Python code we want. This could do anything. It's not really limited to Kiwi. You could send yourself an email or whatever if you really wanted to. But we still got this simple Kiwi language definition to construct the way the program should look and behave. And we can use that entirely for simple pro uh, changes. I'm actually going to finish the video by showing you quickly what I mentioned at the beginning. It really is a very simple thing to change the curl to something random. So let's quickly see how we could do that without using a method at all. We'll still use on text, but actually, again, remembering everything on the right hand side of a colon is pure Python. We can simply write my label dot color equals, and then the same as before, random dot random for i range three plus one. And that will do exactly what we want. It's just a Python line. We take the label, we set its color to a list with three random elements and one opacity set to one. And we don't even need to call back to the Python. The astute among you will have noticed this isn't actually quite enough. In Python, we had to deliberately import the random module in order to use random.random. .random. And in Kiwi language, we do have to do something similar before we can use a Python module. The syntax is similar to Python. We do import or hash colon import and then some keyword and a module name. In this case, you want to import the random module. So we do import and the keyword, we're going to call it random. So it keeps things simple. So there we are. That's just the Kiwi language way of importing a module. That's exactly what we had before. It seems to be, except all in one Kiwi language line showing the power of having it just be pure Python. So let's go back to prove that does work again. Again, as normal. If I start deleting things, we get exactly the same behavior. So just a nice, simple example of uh, using the power of Python definitions in Kiwi language. So that's it for now. We've seen in this video, we can do complex things in Kiwi language alone, but now we can call straight back to Python and do much more complex things if we want to, which that's often very important for uh, any larger program. But as you can see, it's not at all difficult. You can easily refer from to Python from the Kiwi language and back to Kiwi language from the Python. In the next video, I'm going to talk more about Kiwi properties. You might have noticed I've kind of stepped around defining what's really going on here. Why does this text property have this on text event automatically? Can we make our own properties? And the answer is yes. That's very useful in general and even can make some of what I did in this video a little bit easier. But that's for next time. For now, thanks for watching.